Okay, I guess we'll go ahead and get started. It's, it's 2.45. Um, my name is Alex Mackey. I'm from the University of Kentucky, uh, work in the Office of Academic Excellence as an interactive communications uh, specialist. And what we do in our office is we maintain all communications from recruitment to retention. Um, we manage somewhere about 40 Drupal-based web, Drupal websites, uh, manage our CRM, campus-wide solution. Uh, among a few other things. Um, and here, today I'm going to talk about a project that we started back in 2015 and officially launched in February of last year. Um, and just to share some of our insights and what we learned as we built, did this project, some of the content strategies we built, and, and how we kind of changed the way that campus thought about the web content and the structure of everything out there. Um, question, any higher ed people here today? Nice. And you, everybody else, we still like you too. Don't worry, you can get a lot out of this, I promise. Um, so what are we going to talk about? Well, um, we're going to talk about what is the Academic Exploration Tour, what we like to call AET. Um, you know, why did we need it? How did we make the changes that needed to be made? Why was the content the most important piece of the site? Not the look, not the technology, not, none of that was important at the end of it. It was really truly the content. The content drove everything. And, and how now are we turning and leveraging this platform that we've built that, that is the second most visited website on our campus? How do we, how do we make things happen from that. Um, for those of you who have a laptop would like to, you know, get a sneak peek before the end of the, the presentation, you can go to uky.edu forward slash academics. You can find it there. But if you want to wait, don't ruin the surprise, hold off. I promise it's worth it. So um, start with the first question. What is the Academic Exploration Tool? AET is how I refer to it for the rest of the presentation. Um, to answer that, AET is a campus-wide Drupal-based platform that allows users to use their interest to find majors offered at the University of Kentucky. So what does that really mean, right? That's sort of like the quick term. How, how, do, how does that really iron out at the end of the day? Well, what we did is we developed a, a site to allow students to go in and say, you know, I like to work with my hands, or I like to be outside, or work with technology, or something like that. And we've been using taxonomy to tie those uh, academic programs back to those keywords. And those students are able to then find something that interests them rather than searching for a marketing major or an engineering major or something along those lines. It's, it's an interest-based or career-based search instead of, you know, finding a, the, the major name and searching it that way. You can still do that because we still have users that do that on a, a regular basis, but we found that, that people like to, to search more than they like to go out and just scroll through a list of majors. Um, so second question. Why did we need this platform? What, what did we have and what, what, when did we go, oh my goodness, how did we get to this point and we need to fix it right now, right? So, question, or the, what needed to change? Um, well, we needed one way to search and explore majors at the university. Back in 2015, we found that there were multiple ways. Each college had information on their sites. Um, the registrar's office, which we maintain their website, had a listing of, of majors there. There was all different, different categories of data at all these different places and we needed to rope them all together and make one platform. Um, again, no, there was not a centralized listing. You know, there was, there was all kinds, there's, a, there's a, a, a majors list, a minors list, a master's list, a PhD list, a online learning list, a certificate list. There's all these different types of programs out there but there was no one way to, to have them all under one roof and be able to search them all at once. Um, we were back in 2015 using PDFs to maintain all of our major information. There was one man who took a summer, every, took, a, took time every summer, two months, and updated 120 ma major sheets, as we call them, and then sent them to me. I would literally bundle them up, put them in a directory, upload an FTP, and then batch update all the links, and then publish that web page. That sounds insane. It was horrible. Um, it was cumbersome. It was just bad, and, uh, and so we needed to change that. Um, we were also building a platform <coughs> called the Graduation Planning System, using our student uh, records database and what that does is it, it we've built built this platform so that s all the information that is on a major sheet is now dynamic it, it, there's someone who's entering it into SAP and a student can go in and build their their um, oh what's this word they can build their um, they can audit they can sorry, yes they can create a degree audit and see all the courses that they need to take for their four years on campus and so we can now harness that information and put it on this site we knew that was coming and we wanted to leverage that and so we built in a way to, to leverage that, that, that information. Um, what we were using in 2015 was not mobile friendly. 
you know, you had to pinch and zoom and it was horrible. And obviously looking at a PDF on a, on a six inch iPhone is one of the most miserable experiences in the world. And so we needed to change that. Um, at the time, the colleges and programs were controlling their content, so it was all different. There was no template, there was no baseline. Here's the information you must have to, to put, this, put this out there. Um, and we, we saw that that was a kind of a, a weird user experience, that, that there was no baseline sort of, hey, here's your box and here's your five pieces of data you need to have before you can launch a page, and it made it hard to understand and compare things. Um, and also, we didn't have a site that was really driven by any sort of research. It was like, oh, Let's do it the way that when you go into a room and you can look at a, 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 on a wall of all the files of pieces of paper for all of the majors, that's how we put it out there. It was alphabetically done um, and, and then sorted by college. So here's what it looked like. Um, it was a Drupal 6 site, and it literally, like I said, was sorted by college in alphabetical order. You click on one of those colleges, you get a twirl down, and then there's a, 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 the name of the program there. And you click on it and you get what's on the right. And that's, the, those on the right are what the, 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 that poor man had to spend a summer updating um, using Adobe Acrobat and then sending to me and then I had to upload, you know, back to that story, right? Back to that, that vicious cycle. Um, and so, as you can tell, that's not fun to look at. There's no images, it's very bland, it's hard to read. It's written by someone with a PhD level sort of writing ability that, a, you know, an 18 year old coming to college is gonna read that and say, what does that mean? You know, what does that mean for me over four years? Um, and so we decided this needs to change. It was literally that simple as we looked at each other and said, this is bad. There's some really great tech coming on board. Let's find a way to harness it. Let's build a platform that can truly show students and show you know, our quote unquote customers what we have to offer in a better way. Um, and so before I go on, any questions? I just, just so I'm not confusing everyone, everybody good? Okay. Um, so how did we make these changes happen? How did we go from 2015 into today? How did we get here? Um, we first had to, to, to ask ourselves a major question. What do academic programs mean to a university? Um, they helped us frame this project, they helped us understand the scope of what we were doing. We weren't just talking about college information, about you know, what they have to offer. We're talking about the, the, the meat of a university. It's the academic program. It's what students come to the university for. It's what they, they really you know, look at when they, when they visit and, and under, try to pick their college, which is a huge decision at 18 years old, right? Um, and so we started looking around the higher ed space. We looked at Clemson, we looked at Arizona State. Both of them had really great starts to this, this, this database of this information that was super accessible and super nice looking and, and you could, it was all there and it, was, it made sense and it all was in this sort of template that, that you could understand. And so we, we, we took what we learned from them and then pivoted and went to the private sector and looked and, and we were, you know, how, how do other private companies handle their, their, their products? How do, they, how do they show, you know, the worth or the value add that you get from buying, a, you know, the, the new 2016 MacBook Pro with 15 dongles? Like, how do you show, how do you show that value, right? Um, and so, like, as I go through these next few slides, I'm gonna kind of fire through them. I want you all to take a look and, and try to, to understand what these pages are trying to accomplish and then I'll quiz you afterwards. Here we go. Here's the question. What do those have in common? What's the goal of all of those pages? What is the action? Correct. So what they're doing is there all, it's different types of commerce. You know, you want to buy a hard drive, you want to buy a pair of shoes, you want to buy a laptop, you know, anything, any sort of tech, any sort of clothing. You go, to, you go online and you shop and you compare and you see these things and then guess what happens when you find what you want? You click, put in my cart, you put in your credit card information and you buy it. And then two days it shows up on your porch, right? While we can't package up our academic programs and put them in a box and ship them out, we can at least show this, this information that same way. Um, we can really treat our programs like products. And that was the core of this idea, is that, that at the end of the day, while we're a, you know, a, a higher ed institution and we're not technically selling anything to anyone, students come for an education. That is our value add to their lives. That is what we do. We educate them and we provide them with the ability to, with the opportunity to learn, right? And so for us to do that the best way, we had to really rethink it. it wasn't, that information didn't need to live in a PDF. It needed to live in a, in a dynamic, living, breathing site that we could edit, that we could maintain, that we could continue to iterate on and make better when new technology comes out and when things change in the programs and so on and so forth. 
Um, and so another really important question of this and kind of the meat of, of what I want to talk about today is why was the content important? Well, when we, when we took a step back and looked at, at, at some of the data sources we had at our, at our, in our grasp, right, that we had the ability to get, on, get, it, get in, digest, and then reproduce and surface on this site, there's five major ones, right? So you have that information that's available in those major sheets, that those PDFs that don't look great, but technically are really all the true core information we have on those programs. We have what's on their program websites, their college maintained websites. We have, um, and then that GPS information like I talked about, where the, that, that very specific course information that a student registers for their courses for every semester and then they can, they, they can plan out their four years and then know what they're gonna be taking. Um, and then we had, and those are our three, you know, sort of internal sources. We had complete control over those. But then there's those two on the outside. The BLS, the Bureau of Labor and Statistics, um, information from their website, and then the what can I do with my major. And we'll start with BLS. What we decided to do is use their API. Um, they have a great API, it's free, um, that you can, they update their information every two years. So this information's pretty, pretty, you know, up to date. Um, and what they do with that data is it's, it's career information. It's, you know, what does, it, what's the average, average salary for a web developer, um, you know, what's the job outlook for the next 10 years, where are some similar roles, and things like that. And so we use that API, and we brought that information in. And so what a user can do on the back end, looking at the content, is they can select from a list of a couple hundred different actual jobs out in the real world, and pick one and tie that information to the web page. And so when a student's on there, and they're looking at, I want to be a business major. Oh, look, I can be, you know, a, I don't know, a CEO of a company. They make $100,000 a year. The, the job outlook over the next 10 years is there's going to be plus 4,000, you know, however that looks. And then here are some similar jobs. Here's what you'll be doing on a day-to-day -day basis. And all that information is something we don't touch, but BLS keeps up to date. And it's a .gov site, so it's, it's a trusted source, right? And then that last piece is the what can I do with my major? We didn't. We wanted it to be kind of an organic experience. We wanted the so as I get a little farther into this, there's we wanted the content experts to 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 live and breathe on this page and do what they think's best. And so let's say it's an ag, some, something something in our College of Ag, right? And it's a ag econ major. While there may not BLS may not have that, we we wanted to give them the opportunity to say at least give them like a, an economics, you know, uh, something in, in the economic world to to put on that page. Um, we wanted it to be that, that sort of experience where the, the, the author of the page gets to pick it, not, we're not having like the machine do it itself. Does that make sense? Um, but the, so the UT, UT Knoxville created a database called What Can I Do With My Major? And what that does is it ties information, um, it ties, sorry, it ties, it ties jobs to majors. So, you know, director of marketing is obviously you need a marketing degree or um, I'm trying to think about like biology, you'll probably end up pre-med, like things like that. And so what we did is we, on the back end, we tied, we took all of those thousands of entries out, and thanks to a lot of hard work by some, some interns in our office, we were able to map those to majors and literally in, like hard input into them into the back end of the system as keywords. And so you're able to now search those keywords through the back end of the system. Um, and I think it's what's really, really important here is that our office doesn't own this content. We don't want to own it. We, let, like, we, we don't have any desire to own it. We want to give a platform to the colleges, to those, to those people out there who, who are day to day with these programs, with these, these program directors and things like that to own it. We wanted them to build a platform that said, hey, here's your box. Here's your five things you need before you can launch. You know, basic basic uh, program information, a big hero image, a contact email, those kind of things. We wanted to make sure those were there. And so we sort of kind of did a, a federated model to where it's, we use revisions very, very heavily. Um, so we have someone in, the, in, a, in a college publish a piece of content, they save it. it, it triggers an email to a few of us in our office to say, hey, so-and-so published to this page. We go in and we check it. We're not, re -re we're not reading it for what it says, we're checking for, for major like uh, formatting errors for pictures being broken and things like that, and then we publish it, because we trust. That's the one thing we said throughout this whole process is we are not here to be some overlord of your pages and in your information. We're simply here to provide the technical expertise that we have while you own your content. And like I, like I was, was saying, we, we really allowed the experts to develop and maintain the content, but we, when they came to us and said, hey, here's this information, what do I do with it? We gave them some, some guidelines of, you know, don't write 
15 sentences, let's like cut those last 12 of them and only write three. Or that image is three gigs, like that's insane. We're not putting that on the web. Let's downsize that and crop that. Or that's a really bad picture. We shouldn't put your selfie up as your contact image, that kind of stuff. So we went through and did that and we found those things. Um, but again, we let them own it. At the end of the day, they own it. We just maintain the platform. And so here's an example of some, some content that we found. Here's, a, here's one of those major sheets. It, it, a lot of big words. It's hard to read. It's hard to really understand what that major means for an 18-year-old. Um, but you gotta remember, our, our target market is not someone who's been, you know, has a bachelor's or a master's or a PhD. While we do intend in the future to, we're bringing, onboarding our master's programs right now, and we're going to turn around and pivot and bring on our PhD programs right now is just, uh, is just undergraduate majors and undergraduate minors. Um, so that's, this is a, somewhere between 16 and 18 year old student trying to read that. They're not gonna understand that. And so here's what we asked them to do. We took that and made it this. It's a lot easier to read. While the length is similar, the wording's a lot easier to understand. It's less large PhD, you know, wording of something and it's, I'm 18 years old, I need to read that in under 30 seconds because that's my attention span. Here you go. Um, and so, one of the great things that we've noticed since this, this, pro, this, this platform is launched is that the programs are truly understanding that this is a great platform in the leverage and they're actually linking directly from their site to AET when you go to find major information. Our College of Business is a great example of that. The menu items on their site don't go to something under their, in their directory. They come to AET. Um, right now, I mean, like I said, Masters is currently working on, we're building out programs as we speak in our Masters department to where they're, you know, it's all gonna be one central thing. So when, you, when you, you're done with your, your marketing degree, you can then pivot and look in the College of Communication and see, oh, there's a marketing Masters or a communication Masters that is tied directly to what I've, I've already done in undergraduate. So why not just go ahead and move on? And so hopefully this is gonna turn into this, this, this experience to where a student can plan instead of four years and like explore what those offerings are for four years, it can be 12 years or however long it takes to do you know, your master's and your PhD and then on, and onward and maybe a couple certificates or whatever that may look like. Um, and so what we did, we took a look to start this whole project off, let's get to take a step back, is we, we looked at content, we looked at what was necessary. We met with stakeholders across campus and said, here's this idea. It seems really big and scary because we're gonna get rid of you know, your major sheet PDFs and you're gonna have to explain, to, you know, send a student to a URL instead of a PDF on a website. But what are the, what are the necessity, what are the items of necessity that, that have to be on this page in order for us to continue to, to show the correct amount of information to these students? What, it, what does that look like? And, and, the planning process of this probably took longer than the build, and I don't want to say we did this on our own. We worked with a great uh, organization called Up and Up out of South Carolina. They helped us build this platform. But we, what we did is we took a lot, a lot of time to, to really think about the structure of the URLs and being able to, so the marketing looks really clean when you send someone to, you know, uh, the, the, the business management major or something like that. That URL string looks really nice. The design of every page makes sense and that every, every major can fit inside this box that we've built. Because you gotta think, each college is gonna come to us and say, oh, I have this one little piece of content that, that you know, this other college doesn't have, and I need that on those pages. Well, how do you solve that? Flexibility is how you, like, that's, that's, that's what we found is that we built this very flexible content types to where, you know, a lot of it is, is just twirl downs and paragraphs and embed options is really what it is, because that's, at the end of the day, you can get almost everything you need done in those three things. You can, the stuff isn't really important, you can do it in a twirl down. Like, you can embed your videos that you've worked really, really hard on that are great, like, marketing pieces and all that kind of stuff. Um, and so this is, I kind of look back in the, in the archives here, back in 2015, this was our planning document. Not all of this made it to production, but this was the planning document. This was what we looked at to say, you know, here are the, the 16 things that we thought were necessary at that point. Obviously, like I said, not all of them made it to the live site, but this is what we did. We took a step back and said, every program's a little different, but to get everybody into the same system, let's make it as broad as possible and help them sort of find a way to fit, find their, their, their fits here. And so this is what we came up with. Um, I want to kind of share this video so you all can kind of see an under the hood thinking. Um, I don't know if you remember the Beats radio, but this is kind of the way that we viewed the searching of everything. 
um, thinking about you know, how you interact with the site. And so we have those content types, but how do we take those content types and make them searchable? How do we make those, those, that ability to, to find and, and explore instead of directly search for a program? And we thought this was a great, you know, I'm on the subway and feel like saving the world with my lover to 90s pop rock. Like, it's a, it sounds kind of gimmicky, but it makes sense when you're like, I don't really know what I want to listen to. How should I find out what, what music I should listen to today? 18-year-old kids are doing the same thing when they come to college. I don't know what I want to do with my life, but I know I like to work with technology or I like to be outside and things like that. Um, and so I guess to kind of wrap up that thought is that like, everyone out there has something to sell. Like I said, we don't technically sell anything as a, as a public institution, right? But we have programs that offer value add to someone's lives and they think they want that education so they come to college and that is our sell. Right? Effective web content drives that. It drives the sell. It drives your ability to, you know, to close on that deal, per se. Um, there's lots of different ways to say you know, we have effective web content, but the way we built this is, is we wanted to be able to, to say our content is, is the king of this platform, and we're going to make, like, take what you had and make it a thousand times better by optimizing it for the web. And I think, I could be wrong here, but from what I, what I, the way I feel about this project is that we've kind of changed the way campus writes for the web. We showed them how important it is to be succinct, to not have walls of text, to add images, to add videos, to have interactive pieces through this project. And I think it's, it's helped the overall health of web content across our campus as a whole. Um, just because having an exercise like this to where you have to, you know, quote unquote, fit in our box again, they understand that there are, that there are limitations and things that you should think about when writing and creating content for the web. Um, I just want to share this. This is pretty cool little piece of content here that we have on, on AET right now. Our mathematics department, so those three figures you see there, those mathematical elements you see there, are actually, um, you know, mathematical notations, when in reality those are what we call statistic callouts. So they should be saying like number one math program in the world or 100 students, 100% 100 of our students get a job trained out of college. Obviously these aren't true, but you, you get the gist, right? Well, they took it and got effective and creative with their content and said instead of putting up stats about how great our program is, let's show we have a little you know, flavor or flair in what we do. And so they put ma mathematical notations up there to say, hey, you know, we can make jokes too even though we do math all day, right? So pretty cool. Um, and here is the big reveal. This is what AET looks like today. So um, as you can tell, uh, there's, three, there's four different search options there. It's I like to. Um, with those options, I like to work outside. I like to, um, uh, you know, um, work with technology, work with my hands, work with others, that kind of thing. Um, there's another option that's I want to be a. You can search for I want to be a CEO. I want to be a web engineer. I want to be a mathematician. Whatever that may be, you can search and find that information. Um, and then there's I'm searching for, so I'm searching for the mathematics degree, or I'm searching for the, the ag e economics degree, or I'm searching for the design degree, whatever that may be, you can search directly for that. And then you can do browse all programs because now we're seeing that a lot of students come and they're like, well, what, you know, what do I do? I don't know exactly what, I, even with all these great search options, I don't know what I want to do. I just want to browse. And so we allow them to browse and they get this. But then on the right-hand side over there, you can actually go in and sort based off college, based off degree type, based off of um, program type and things like that. And you're able to, to, to really get down into like, here's, you know, if I, I know I want to be in, in the business college, but I don't know what I want to do inside that business college, here are your options. And so here's what one of the, uh, the landing pages looks like. There you go. That's a big, I'm zooming in a couple of times here, but uh, so you see that obviously you have those, those call outs, you have a big picture on the right hand there that's the contact information, you have a, uh, a couple paragraphs of, of some information about the general program, you have a, a student picture with a quote saying how much fun they had while learning, um, and then you get into some cool stuff like that, that GPS data. And so using a, a custom module that was built, we're able to port that information out of SAP into the, into the site. Um, and so students can explore and say, oh, I'm gonna do a forestry degree and I want to do the, the BS option, you know, uh, Bachelor of Science. And so you can go in and actually click on each of those courses and see a very brief description of what that course means. Because what, in reality, what does Chemistry 104 mean to an 18-year-old who doesn't have any idea, like, you know, what those tags mean, things like that? 
with that, with that module, they're able to find that information and really get that one to two sentence brief of here's what that course means. Um, if you scroll back up to the top, here's what it looks like. Again, name of the college, name of the program, some of those stat callouts about the program. Um, but then the breadcrumbs to get them around really easy. Uh, basic uh, program information, some what, how, they grow, how the College of Ag does in like growing their careers of the students. Um, the guy on the right, if you contact about it, has his phone number, has his email, has the website, all of those things. And that was a big thing that we found is that there was no face with these programs. Students are out there and they see this PDF and they're like, well, that's great. I know I want to do forestry, but who do I talk to about it? I have some general questions. Now they have that ability to say, I know I need to go talk to Wayne there. And so I'll, they'll call up, call Wayne up. They'll send him an email. They'll do those things. They'll interact with him. And so that helps that sort of un, un, that undecided nature to where they can get those questions answered. And like, okay, forestry is for me now. I know that for a fact. Um, just want to share some other cool things people have done. Um, you know, the number one most popular major at UK is biology because that kind of leads into the, the doctor, nurse sort of what that's pre-med for us. Um, and then on the right there is the BLS module. As you can see, uh, the free to career is a, a, bio, a biological technician. Um, you see their salary, you see the jobs, you see the job outlook, you see some related jobs, you see some what do you do on a day-to-day -day basis sort of thing. Um, and so here's some of the analytics that we've had since launch. Um, we have 50 authors across campus getting into this site. This is since February of 2016. Uh, 50 authors building this content, changing this content, updating, that kind of thing. Um, we have 6,000 keywords in the site. Um, and so what that means, those keywords are those, those words where I want, um, <clears throat> excuse me, so it's like I'm searching for biology or I'm searching for, um, I'm trying to think of another great example, instead of mathematics, math or you know, something along, like, to where it's like, it, we don't, the fuzzy logic we found wouldn't really work with this site because there's a lot, there's so many different options out there that we couldn't really do that fuzzy search logic. And so we had to go in and think about, you know, oh my goodness, if someone searches math, there's nothing, but so we need to put math on the mathematics page and maybe on the, you know, business page or whatever that may be. Um, and we've had 100,000 keyword searches in a little over a year, which these numbers still kind of, I can't wrap my mind around these numbers, they're kind of incredible. Um, 90,000 total uh, career keyword searches, so that's I want to be a CEO, I want to be an engineer, I want to be a biologist, whatever that, whatever that may be. Um, 50,000 interest matches, so that is I, I like to, those, those eight or nine keywords, that's those. We've had 1.3 million page views, that's unique page views, that's pretty incredible. And then the one that gets me every time is 260,000 unique users. Um, and that's blocking internal IP addresses, that's total external off-campus traffic. We're really proud of that. We think it's, it, like I said, it's number two visited site on campus as of a couple weeks ago. I don't know if that's changed, but it's pretty incredible. And to, to kind of wrap everything up, I just kind of want to share how we're leveraging this platform. Because we built this great tool, but now how do you really get you know, production out of it? How do you grow enrollment? How do you make sure that students aren't undecided when they come to college and they understand their, their programs when they get here? Um, some of the current initiatives we're doing is uh, doing postcards of students who are interested in a certain college. You know, we're working with uh, our engineering department a lot to help them drive their enrollment to say, okay, we have these students have been flagged coming into our system as they, they're interested in engineering. Let's well, drive them to AET, those engineering pages, so they can really understand all the offerings that we have. Um, we're doing email communications the same way. You know, uh, we, we see that you flagged yourself as you're interested in, in, in communications. Here's the communications AET page. Here's some related majors that you also may like if, if communications isn't really your thing. Um, we developed short URLs so all the colleges can put the, the cblue.com forward slash whatever that college name may be to where they can go out and put that on print material and that'll never change and it's always going to show all their degree options and minors and eventually master's programs and PhDs and all that it all it all get there um, and recruiters when they meet one-on-one -on -one with these students are using AET in those meetings to help them you know uh, figure out what they want to do we're moving to Salesforce and we have plans to to integrate with Salesforce, integrate this data, we're pulling all this, this analytic data out and be able to say, oh, you visited mas this, 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 this master's program for uh, business 15 times but never applied. What can we help you? You know, send a follow-up email, say, hey, like, how can we help you? Those sort of things. And we're uh, integrating the data so that we'll be able to understand where students are interested and where they end up. Um, some quick takeaways, I know I'm running out of time, so I'm kind of speeding up here. Um, I, I really like the Bill, Bill Gates quote from 1996, an article it was titled, Content is King. Um, that, 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 that quote is, content is where I expect much of the real money to be made on the internet. It drives the internet. 
websites are great, but the content is truly the meat of those websites, and that's what is most important. Whenever you develop something, content is king. Um, we, we found, and something else to do is always think about finding those who, own, who know and own the content and, and get them to, to understand and make their content better and then publish that content. Because while well, you all may, may have a great view of the overarching idea of, where, of the institution you work for or the company you work for, there are those in those smaller departments who are doing the day-to-days that know the content best. Utilize them. They're great at what they do. You're great at what you do. Be a team. Do it together. Um, define the content before you build. Always find what content is needed and then build. Don't worry about what it's going to look like. Worry about what you're going to put in it first. Um, and then find ways to leverage the platform because you could build the best website or platform in the entire world, but if you don't leverage it, it won't be used. It's, it's as simple as that. Um, here's that quote. I was going to kind of expand on it, but I'm out of time. Any questions, comments, anything? No? Yes. In the catalog, the, so, so what's going to happen is that GPS that I've talked about is actually you're going to be able to generate PDFs out of that on the fly. And so the historical PDFs will be there. We're going to like sort of bury them on that page where you can always find them and they'll be tagged to that page. But at the end of the day, that content, that, that those courses are going to change so much and be updated so much that we're going to generate PDFs out of that as quickly as we can. Does that make sense? Yes, and we struggled with that. We did. And so we get a lot of pushback from the academic side of the house. Yeah. And, you know, the, the course catalog is completely by new documents. Yes. And we, we still have that. I don't want you to think that we got rid of that. It's just it's, it's handled in that GPS module. We're no longer updating those PDFs and maintaining a big database and directory of those. That's gone. That model's gone, and we've moved to the digital. So and that, that's still their binding contract but we've just moved away from maintaining it as a PDF. Any other questions? Yeah. I'm sure there's a lot of Kentucky-specific things in here, but you guys interested in sharing some of this data structure or uh, Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. I, feel free, if you want to meet after this, or you can email me, alex.mackey at UKY. I have business cards or whatever. Just come talk to me. I'm more than happy to share. I mean, it was a long process. I'm more than happy to be there. So it, feel free to ask any questions you may have. So anything else? No? Yeah, I can I can I guess I'll put it on that the node for the, the thing. I'll update that for everybody. So awesome. Thank you all very much.